Hello, my name is Max and welcome to Factorio Space Age. In this episode, we're going to test our train network. It's a small train network, but it's smart. It's parameterized. And that's something very good because now we can have general purpose trains that do different things and serve different stations. But first, we need a station. We need uh, somewhere to get started. And what better choice than to get our iron things together. So in order to do that, I've completed these arrays. And now I'm going to put a balancer down. And in order to do that, I have these blueprints. These are, I don't know who did this, but they are amazing. And I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five, six belts to four belts. Let's see if there is such a thing. Six to four. Oh yeah, we have it. Let's just put it down. Okay, I'm going to put this here and I'm going to remove this. Yeah, okay. This is going to be our new iron mine. So what is special? What is special about these train stations? First of all, when they are empty, they would not call for a train. So the train won't come here and just wait for ages. They'll, they'll wait until there is some iron ore available, or any ore for that matter. And then, depending on how much ore is there to be served, they'll summon trains. How do they do that? Using train limits. Okay, this is more work than I thought. Okay, let's speed this up. There's something oddly satisfying about conveyor belts, especially when you put them down and they work together harmoniously. I love it. Now, with the rest of this station, this is a provider station. As you can see, there's a lot of, there are a lot of uh, buffer chests and uh, let's connect it. And that's it. So right now, because it has some ore, the train limit is one. As it accumulates more and more ore, this will become two, three, and four because we set the maximum at four. One, two, three, and four trains. Now, how does this work? Well, well, let's say it's gonna be a huge long tutorial to talk about the details of the circuit network, but for now, let's not worry about this. Another shout out to uh, the creator of this amazing blueprint book called 10 books full of rails. Go check it out. It's amazing. Use it. It's just awesome. Okay, great. So now we have a station that provides iron ores. We have a station that requires iron ore. We have a depot, we have a refueling station, and we have the fuel supply. What we are going to do, what I'm going to do, in fact, is that I'm going to just put down a train, and that's going to be our first smart train. Let's go. Let's put down the train. I want a DIY train, okay? It's gonna be a fiver and one, two, three, four cargo wagons. And let's hit your ride before it leaves us all of a sudden. And look at this. Okay, so let's explain how these trains work briefly. It's all about interrupts. It's amazing, these interrupts are so good. So when it needs fuel, it goes to the refueling station. When it needs, and we're gonna explain in detail what's gonna happen in each of these as they happen. So when it gets the fuel and everything is good, it looks for a provider station that is available, meaning the train limit is not zero, which means a provider is available. It provides something. We don't care what it is at this point. We just go there and pick it up. And if there are no requesters, we just sit there until one becomes available. The moment a requester is available of the same item, the train starts to go there to fulfill the request. After the request is fulfilled, it has two choices. If the provider is still available and has something to be picked up and no other train is there, the train simply goes back there and picks things up and so on and so forth. On the other hand, if the provider is full or it has nothing to provide, so it's closed, our train will just fulfill the request and goes to the depot and sleeps there or waits there until there is another provider available. And it is always good to uh, have a train full of items in our provider stations ready for a request rather than wait for the request and then go and pick stuff up because the uh, former approach is way more faster. 
now way faster not more faster that's like double fast okay anyway i'm gonna give this train a little bit of fuel not much just a little bit because i want to test if it goes for refueling or not okay are you ready let's go yes okay so we are headed to a temporary station for refueling okay so you remember this station we created it what's happening here we have some coal in the fueling chamber it is inferior to the solid fuel so it just got rid of it and now it's being fueled with the superior fuel type which is the uh, solid fuel after it's done or there's five seconds of inactivity which means we don't have any more fuel here we're just gonna go on our merry way and what's it gonna be of course a provider is available we don't know what it is providing but we know it is available and it has something to provide now that something can be just a little or a lot of something so we're gonna go there in this case the iron ore provider okay we are there we're happy let's see what happens here so we're gonna be here until the uh, train is full until we have full cargo or sometimes there are some iron ores here or some items here but there's not much so we do not want to be staying here forever. If there is more than two seconds of an activity, we are ready to go, provided there is a requester station ready. And as you can see, both of these are green, meaning a requester station is available and is not full. So the only thing we are waiting for is either the cargo full or the inactivity period. Okay. So let's wait a few more seconds and see what happens when we have full cargo. And it's going to happen because, uh, as you can see, a lot of ore is coming. And so we will eventually have full cargo. And we are about to hit that threshold. Let's go. What's going to be the next interrupt? Here we go. The requester station is summoning us. For what? The item we picked up. Turns out it was iron ore. How much of it do we have? 8,000. And when are going to be, uh, when our uh, request is going to be fulfilled? When it is zero, when there's nothing, absolutely nothing left in these wagons. So we're going to stay here until we are done. And as you can see, we have the requester station unloading the train on both sides. So it's faster. And then what happens to the train? Well, my guess is we're going to go back to the provider. Why? because there's still more items to provide no other trains that competes for those resources or other, other stations and we just have one train here so it's gonna go back and get more items and when that happens i'm gonna get off the train because we need to connect this to our smelting arrays okay this is gonna be equal to zero so you don't see a progress bar here this is a very interesting way to design a network why i'm gonna tell you in a second okay See? Temporary. Again, go back to the... Uh, please don't do this. Go back to the uh, iron uh, ore provider station. So we're going to forget about this train for now. And we're going to come here and connect these lines. As I tell you why it is good to have generic trains. Well, there are only a handful of stations uh, available. Should I create another column? yeah why not let's go big we have trains we are invincible don't you agree usually when we have a train network most of the trains are idle they're waiting for something to happen they're waiting for a provider for a requester it's like having cars most of them most of the time the car is just in the parking waiting same is with the train station and train network in Factorio or anywhere else. So what we do is that we make them generic so they can serve different lines like taxis or Uber or whatever. And in that way, we increase the utilization of our network. This one goes and becomes steel. I'm not going to connect it yet. And this one, well, let's say this one goes and becomes the uh, iron ore, iron plates. Okay. Are we ready? Do we dare? Let's connect it. And here we go. Okay. 
Beautiful. What happens here? Let's go up and see what happens here. It's super important, super duper important not to connect this to this accidentally because this one's iron ore and this one is iron plates. And as you can see, iron plates are coming this way. And all we need to do is to merge these two lines. And yes, we have a full belt, full red belt of iron plates. Gone are the days that we were desperately waiting for iron to fulfill the production hub. Awesome. Now it's time to do the uh, honors for the steel bars or steel plates. Let's do it. Okay. So iron is being smelted. Then it puts them here, which takes about five seconds to create a steel plate. So it's a one by one to one ratio. And that's it. And the weird placement of the uh, power pole here or the substation here is because this substation cannot serve these inserters and this one cannot serve these. And this was the most minimal design I could come up with to uh, make sure we have full coverage. And look what we have here. Isn't this amazing? Now, I'm not going to bore you by showing you how I'm going to connect this to this. We're going to end this episode right here. Next time we come back, I'll probably added another iron ore production column here as well and then we're gonna go start on the military science because we are long due on our journey to go and kill some biters because at that point we can go and tap into all these resources freely and get going on production of our main bus all right that's it for this episode if you liked what i did if you like this train network that we created please go ahead and click that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and stay tuned for more episodes of Factorio Space Age. Thank you and goodbye.